Today we're talking stingrays with my friend and fellow Long Island native, Anthony, the Long Island fish guy. He's got some pretty wild tanks with peacock bass, Hoplo cats, George the Oscar, and of course, Steve the Stingray. I don't know about you, but I'm curious to learn more about Steve and keeping stingrays in an aquarium in general. Anthony, it's all you, man. What's going on, everybody? It's boy Long Island fish guy here. Shout out to you, Ryan. Thanks for having me on the channel today. Do appreciate it. But let's hop into talking about some stingrays. There are plenty of different types of stingrays that you can own in your aquarium. For example, my stingray that I have is a mini marble Matoro mixed with a stingray that's called an Aparaccio. Aparaccio is not really a very common stingray that's found in aquariums, uh, but mine is. <laughs> Specifically, the mini marble Matoro, which mine looks probably most like, uh, is a stingray that only gets to be about 12 inches as a male and 18 inches as a female. Now that it's very uncommon for most freshwater stingrays. There are many different types of freshwater stingrays. There's the Matoro, which is arguably the most common. There's the Black Diamond, which everybody does love. And there's even things like Pearl Stingrays. Now that's just to name a few of the most common types. Now those Stingrays that I did just name get very big. Now there are other types that do stay smaller. Uh, some of the more common ones are something called the Reticulated or the Hystrix. Those will stay in the same category as mine, where it get, it'll get to be about uh, anywhere between 10 to 15 inches. Now, the reason why I'm stressing size so much is because a lot of times you'll see a Matoro, which is arguably the most common stingray inside of your local fish store, and everybody wants to own a stingray at one point, so they'll buy that. Now, the Matoro stingray can get to be up to three feet in diameter. So you're gonna need a pretty big tank for that. Something like a black diamond will cost you anywhere between 400 to $1,000, depending upon the actual size and quality of it. So you know you're gonna be spending a lot of money when you're actually getting into the stingray game. Now, hypothetically speaking, let's say you go, okay, well, I can afford it and I wanna get it, let's do it. Let's talk about some of the things that you'll need to know in order to take care of this stingray. You're gonna need a big tank. Now my hybrid Stingray is currently in a 125. Uh, it does have some driftwood in it and a sand substrate. Stingrays like to burrow underneath the sand. Now, some of the most avid Stingray owners that I do know have a bare bottom aquarium for their Stingrays. Uh, it really depends upon what you like and what you wanna do. Um, you can go either way. My Stingray likes to burrow also likes to swim up and down the glass, uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, the benefits of the sand is it's more of a natural type setup for your Stingray. Uh, they'll probably appreciate that just a little bit more, and that's just my opinion. The benefits of the bare bottom is it's easier to clean. Stingrays are an extremely high bio-load animal. Uh, they eat a lot. They definitely need to eat at minimum once per day. Um, some will even recommend twice per day daily. So a bare bottom tank will definitely allow you uh, to have a better cleanup for your stingray. Speaking of feeding, your stingray is going to eat a lot and it's gonna need to eat a lot. Uh, Mostly what I like to feed my stingray is anything that's uh, frozen real food. So things like frozen shrimp, frozen tilapia that's cut up. Um, it'll eat pellets, specifically the Hikari carnivore pellets. They do, it, the stingray loves to eat the Hikari carnivore pellets, the sinking pellets. There's a little trick that I like to do with my, feeding my stingray. Obviously I have other fish inside there with my stingray. So I like to use my siphon tube uh, to actually make sure that all of the food that I do feed it reaches the bottom so that it can actually eat that. And it'll get a little aggressive around feeding time. Uh, in regards to tank mates for your Stingray, basically you can put it with anything that won't fit in its mouth in regards to you know it being aggress aggressive towards other fish. Um, again, anything that won't fit into its mouth, you'll probably be good with. Now, tank mates that might, you might not want to put with your Stingray, some people will tell you plecos uh, because the plecos will try to eat the uh, slime coat or the protein that's on the disc of the stingray. I have my stingray with plecos and I don't have that issue. Sometimes people will have issues with geophagus uh, just because obviously geophagus are sand sifters and they're going to be looking to, you know, 
eat a lot off of the ground, potentially eating uh, at your stingray. Now, I did have one issue with that. I do have geophagus down here, um, and one of my geophagus actually nipped at my stingray's tail a lot. I removed that geophagus, um, and obviously it healed up, and you know the stingray is good to go, and, and that geophagus is no longer with the stingray. I do have other geophagus with the stingray, um, and I never had an issue with it. It really goes case by case, uh, depending upon the actual stocking and the tank mates and the compatibility with the other fish. In regards to actual you know, water quality and parameters, just like any fish, you don't want to have high ammonia. You don't want to have any high nitrite. Uh, you really just want to keep your parameters as best as possible. Let's go back to tank sizes for just a minute. Now, if you have a stingray that's going to be anywhere between 10 to 15 inches, you can probably get away with putting it into a 125 until it gets a little bit bigger. Now you could probably put this stingray in a 125 for its entire life. Now, will it enjoy that? Will it thrive in there? Probably not. Which is where you really should put it in something like a 220 or larger. And then for the stingrays that are like the Matoros, the Black Diamonds, the Pearl stays a little bit smaller than those. You really need to put this in a monster tank. I mean, these Matoros and Black Diamonds to be three feet three feet. You're going to need a very wide aquarium for these types of stingrays. I really would recommend a pond, you know, thousand gallon pond. That would be the best type of setup um, or obviously something larger than that. Don't put anything too aggressive with your stingray as well. If unless it's a very passive Oscar, any fish that's a predatory fish, you know, I want to put it with any sort of gars or any sort of aggressive cichlids. Um, really keep it away from that. I've seen people keep them with arowana successfully. You should be fine with an arowana. You really want to try and keep them with fish that are more so on the passive side and won't show any aggression towards it. You're going to need a lot of filtration on these tanks as well because of the high bio load that is inside of the tank with the Stingray. On this 125, I do have a, a Fluval FX6 as well as a Hang on the Back Aquion. If you do have any questions regarding Stingrays, definitely feel free to check out my channel, drop a comment on one of my videos, or find me on Instagram at Long Island Fish Guy. So are you ready to keep a Stingray in your aquarium yet? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm not ready yet, but I do love watching Steve. Go check out Anthony's channel, Long Island Fish Guy. Link in the description below for more of Steve the Stingray, George the Oscar, and all his wild fish tanks. Anthony, thanks for sharing your knowledge with us, man. Ryan from your Long Island Fish Guy friend. Thanks for watching, everybody, and fish on.